The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 197. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the Entrepreneur's Library. Today we have Jamie Smart, author of The Little Book of Clarity, a quick guide to focus and declutter your mind. Welcome, Jamie, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Oh, pleasure to be here, Wade. Absolutely. Before we take a deep dive into the little book of clarity, we take just a moment to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you personally. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm I'm uh, an entrepreneur, and my my fascination is with how people think and how people motivate themselves and how people get results. And and very specifically, what I found is that. How the mind works is just such a, a huge area of fascination for me. In fact, I've I've been exploring that domain for many many years and was at the at the top of my field as an NLP trainer. And then I kind of I got what for many entrepreneurs is kind of the dream. You know, I had a time freedom and I was. Uh, you know, on a mini retirement skiing out in Whistler on a three month ski vacation, and I was six weeks in and I was bored and I was restless and I thought, well, hang on, something's wrong with this picture because I'm supposed to be feeling incredibly successful. I've got the external trappings of success, but I'm not having a successful experience of life. And in fact, that's what sent me back to the drawing board and that's what had me write this book. Mm, excellent. So so we'll cover that a little bit later too, but now let's, let's jump into the book, The Little Book of Clarity. A, guide, a quick guide to focus and declutter your mind, uh, which was made available February in the UK, March in the United States, so not that long ago. And then, uh, Jim, we're going to move quickly, but our whole mm-hmm. goal here today is to cover those top questions that our listener slash future reader would like to get answered You know, before, before investing in your book. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Little Book of Clarity? Well, what it really was when I found myself kind of having all the trappings of success, but none of the feelings of success. And I went back to the drawing board and I found that there was a fundamental misunderstanding behind uh, how I thought life worked. And what I found was that as I cleared up that misunderstanding for myself and started clearing it up for my clients, not only did I become more productive more uh, uh, more clear-minded, more comfortable in my own skin and better relationships and enjoying life more, but became more successful. And I find the same results happen with my clients because it turns out we're designed for reality. We actually do really, really well in reality, but we don't do so well when we're caught up in our muddled thinking. So uh, that was very much the inspiration behind writing this book. And you and I talked beforehand about how many books come out uh, for the entrepreneur every single month. So this next question will help us uh, declutter that, I guess, that, that field of books. So what mm. makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, you'll find that any book, all the, pretty much every other book about productivity, about clearing your mind, about getting clarity, that sort of thing, is going to give you a whole bunch of things to do, things to practice, things to remember, methodologies, tips, techniques, that sort of thing. Now, here's the problem. Those are all things you got to remember to do so you can have more on your mind. And it just struck me like, how can you help someone have a clear mind by giving them more to think about? Mm -hmm. So the little book of clarity doesn't give you anything to do, anything to remember, anything to practice, which may sound strange at first. But what you'll find, and you know, you can look at the reviews on Amazon, people say, they, they read it, and it's what I call implication-based learning. So as you get a better understanding about how something in life works, like how it already works, then it starts to implement automatically for you. Now, I know that may sound too good to be true, but I promise you that's exactly how it works. And that's what's so different about this. All you need to do is read the book, and it'll do the work for you. Jamie, based on that, how did you write the book to be read? Or, or, or maybe an easier question is, how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? I mean, can they jump in, jump out, cherry picking information? Or did you really write it to be read from front to back? It really is one to be read in sequence. And in fact, one of the earliest chapters tells you about a way of reading, which I call reading for insight. You see, most of us, we're used to reading for information, like we're reading a car manual or reading a how-to book. But 
the idea of the little book of clarity is uh, this is this is going to be uh, good news for entrepreneurs because the idea of it is that you've already got that spark of entrepreneurship, that source of productivity, of resilience, of clarity. That's already there within you, and the purpose of the book is for to create a space where you're inner clarity, your inner sense of purpose and resilience and all that stuff comes to the surface. So it's it's very much focused on creating a space where that can happen. So I, I talk in, in one of the early chapters about how to read so that that happens. We'll, we'll review that in just a moment, actually. Excellent. So Jamie, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview. And this is where I can hand over the mic and really allow you to take us through your book. So we we already know that, you know, a little bit of the purpose, a little bit of the background behind the book. So right now, let's take a deep dive into the content itself. Will you take the next, you know, five to eight minutes and and give the future reader a great idea of what your book's all about? Sure. So starting with the introduction, um, there's a quote I just want to read, which is, if a pond is clouded with mud... There's nothing you can do to make the water clear. But when you allow the mud to settle, it will clear on its own because clarity is the water's natural state. Well, clarity is your mind's natural state. So the introduction is really setting the scene. So as you go through that, you'll find it talking about things that you can relate to, like kind of information overwhelm and all the things that, you know, people tell us we ought to be doing and practicing and remembering. And it'll be setting a different direction for that. And you'll also find at the end of the introduction and at the end of every chapter, there's one of those QR codes that you can scan with your smartphone or a URL that you can type in. And it'll take you to videos that explain the chapters in more depth as well. Those are free videos that come with the books and videos, audios, and that sort of thing, as well as social media and Integration. So I really wanted to make this a book that you can use in a really interactive way. And then the first chapter is called Misunderstanding, The Hidden Trap. And it kind of sets the perspective of like, if I don't know if you know, but 150 years ago, people didn't know about germs. They thought illness and disease was caused by bad smells. And ju- so like a 10-year-old child today could go back if they could go back in time they would know more about health and be able to have a bigger impact on health than the the best educated doctors in the world in the 1850s well the principles behind clarity are to our psychology what the discovery of germs were was to medicine um so that's what the first chapter is about. Second chapter is called The Power of Insight. And that's really what we we're just talking about, about when you read the book, you're going to read it for something that comes from inside of you. And that may sound kind of strange, but the nice thing about it is there's nothing you need to practice or remember. So this is kind of a relaxing read for people. But you, as you'll see, when you check out Amazon, people have literally been, their lives have been changed by reading it because it's waking up your inner power of productivity, clarity, resilience, all of that stuff. Um, Chapter three is kind of a technical chapter called how perception is created. And it's just explaining how your senses work and how your mind works, because it turns out that that's what creates some of the misunderstandings we get caught up in as we get kind of, you've heard the phrase, a trick of the mind. Well, when you read this chapter, you're going to discover how your mind may have been tricking you. And the the great thing about any magic trick is as soon as you know how the trick is done, it doesn't have the same power over you. So it may be in this chapter or it may be a later chapter that you suddenly have an insight. And an insight is just one of those sudden aha moments where you realize something about yourself, about maybe where you've been getting in your own way or uh, kind of trying to drive with your handbrake on metaphorically. Um, so we start talking about those kinds of tricks of the mind because so many of the things that we uh, struggle with as entrepreneurs are, they really are tricks of the mind. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's what you'll find there. Then chapter four is talking about the power of principles. And that's very much, uh, you know, about that there are facts of life, like gravity is a principle. Uh, um, the laws of thermodynamics, their principles, well, there are principles that run our minds and run our emotional systems, and there are principles behind mental clarity and innovation and productivity and all these things. And when you understand these principles, uh, it makes everything a lot easier. The other thing you'll find in this chapter is what I call the clarity equation, which is clarity 
equals capacity minus contamination. So the idea of that is we all have a capacity for all the good stuff. You know, we all have the capacity of a Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates or an Elon Musk. We all have that incredible entrepreneurial capacity. But what gets in the way of it is what I call contaminated thinking, which is just just thinking that trips us up, like limiting beliefs and all, you know, self-doubt, all those things that get it get in our way. Well, the interesting thing about the clarity model is it's ruthlessly subtractive. We're not going to add anything in. We're just going to take away the stuff that's been getting in your way until now. And you find that as you take away the stuff that's been getting in your way, clarity emerges. So that's a chapter. That's the chapter where you're going to discover that clarity equation. Clarity equals capacity minus contamination. And there's a little picture there that goes with it, and it gets repeated throughout the book. And the other thing you're going to find in this chapter is what I call the deep drivers. And there are eight powerful values that every single one of us has, the powerful resources that help us create the results you want to create. So there are things like clarity and purpose and direction, uh, resilience, creativity, connection, authenticity, intuition, presence. And we're talking about them here because it turns out you've already got them within you. They're not things that you have to cultivate. All you need to do is clear the stuff out of the way that's been getting in your way until now. Um, so I'm going to just skip through the chapters now. Chapter five is the psychological immune system. You know how you got a physical immune system? Well, you've also got a psychological immune system. Uh, just like your physical immune system takes care of your body, your psychological immune system is there to take care of your psychology. But if you don't know about it, uh, you don't get to benefit from it as much. Then we talk about habit, habitual thought patterns. Um, seven, you're, if you're anything like me, you're going to love chapter seven because it's called stress, the source and the solution. So we divide into we dive into that there. In chapter eight, you're going to discover what I call the ultimate leverage point. You know, uh, leverage, as you'll know as an entrepreneur, one of the most powerful things you can get is leverage. And so this chapter is about the ultimate leverage point. Now, the next eight chapters, they're diving into each of those deep drivers in depth. So I'm not going to go into them one by one, but those eight deep drivers I just mentioned, like connection, resilience, clarity, purpose, direction, etc., it goes into each of one of those in detail. And again, you're going to discover reading those chapters, you're going to discover those qualities within yourself. And it's so cool to realize that, that these qualities, they're not things you need to go away and work on or cultivate or practice because, geez, you're busy enough with your business without having to do all that stuff. They're things that are already there within you. And it's just that there's sometimes been something getting in the way of them until now. And as you get a better understanding of what that is, it's all going to get easier. And that brings us to chapter 17, which is called There's Only One Problem. And that's the one thing that gets in the way of that stuff. I'm not going to tell you now. I want to leave, leave something for when you read the book. But then when you get to chapter 18, I'm going to introduce you to what I call penicillin for the mind. Just like penicillin goes wherever it's needed in your body, goes like everywhere in your body to cure infection, this penicillin for the mind goes everywhere in your psychology to give you what you need. You're also going to discover that freedom from the self-improvement trap. And then the other chapters, you'll like 20, chapter 20, the leadership delusion. And I think I'll finish on this one, actually. The leadership delusion is there's jillions of books being written about leadership. And the fact is you can't learn about leadership from a book, but you have the blueprint of leadership and exponential growth and entrepreneurial excellence within you. And as you wake up to that fact, everything gets so much more fun, profitable, and enjoyable. So I'm going to leave it there, Wade, but I thought that would give a nice pricey for your, your listeners about what, what they're going to find when they read the book. Jim, you did a fantastic job of taking us through that, and I appreciate uh, uh, the time. The timing too was perfect not not too little, not too much. Uh, you did a fantastic job of taking us through that. And this this next question, I feel like sometimes is is kind of mean because you just took the time to break down the entire yeah. book, and now we're we're asking you to break it down even a step further. And that you know, if the reader can only take away one concept, principle, or action item out of everything you just discussed with us, your entire book, what would you, as the author, want that to be? Oh, that's very easy. So 
just like the misunderstanding of germs, of the, you know, the nature of germs caused tons of misery and suffering and death up until the late 1800s, a simple misunderstanding about the, how the mind works is the cause of pretty much all the struggles that you face in your life and all the struggles we face in society. You clear up that misunderstanding, your life is going to instantly improve, your business is going to instantly improve, and your relationships with your loved ones, with your clients, and your friends, and everyone else who matters with, to you is going to improve. So that's the one thing I'd, uh, I'd say people uh, could take away. That's excellent. And there was, there was some quote worthy things you just said in that, which actually leads to our next question, which is, do you have a favorite quote from your book, something that you wrote that, that you really think will resonate uh, with the reader? And will you take a second to explain what it means to you? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set the frame for it first, Wade. Um, you know how teddy bears, when little kids have a teddy bear or a security blanket, and they feel like that teddy bear or security blanket gives them a feeling of security, mm -hmm. and if it gets taken away from them, they feel like their security is being taken away? Yeah. Well, well, that's just a trick of the mind. There's no security in the security blanket or the teddy bear. It's all coming from within the child. But and we know that's a trick of the mind. But we all, as, as we grow up, we transfer that teddy bear onto partners or bank accounts or businesses or whatever. And it's a trick of the mind. And so what I've said is, how secure can a person ever feel when they're believing that their security comes from something outside of them? That, that's powerful. And, and you know, for those that are on the road or mobile or walking right now, we're going to put that in the show notes at the elpodcast.com so they can go back and, and mm -hmm. reflect on that a little bit more. It's hard to, to get a quote because uh, usually they're very powerful and then just move along to the next question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Jamie, so that was our last question over the uh, over your book itself. And this next question is, is you know, as a book-centric podcast, we have to ask uh, for a recommendation. And I always preface it that it's not just any, it's the recommendation. So if, if there's only one book you could recommend, based on the way that it's changed your life, created a, a paradigm or a lifestyle shift, uh, what book would you recommend? And I did want to preface, it doesn't have to be over business, entrepreneurship, clarity, anything like that, just any book that impacted you. Well, actually, for uh, given that this is an entrepreneurial podcast, I'd really like to recommend one that has a lot of relevance to entrepreneurs because okay. the the books, some of the books that have impacted my life are so weird and out there that they're not going to have wide appeal. But this book is just such a, a, a must have for every entrepreneur. It's by Seth Godin. And it's called All Marketers Are Liars. And it's just, uh, and the subtitle is The Power of Telling Authentic Stories in a Low Trust World. And it's one of the best books I've ever read about how marketing and storytelling uh, has to suffuse every aspect of our businesses today. So I r really recommend that book by Seth Godin. I must have read that book 10 times. Excellent. Very good. And we've, ac we've had it recommended once or twice before. So I appreciate you uh, you bringing up that book. And Jamie, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also get more information on your book, The Little Book of Clarity? Oh, yeah, for sure. So head on over to littlebookofclarity.com. There's uh, loads of good uh, free materials there and that sort of thing for you to check out. And you can find out all about me at jamiesmart.com. Perfect. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me, Wade. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Jamie or his book, The Little Book of Clarity, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And as always, if you'd like an opportunity to win this book, become a VIP at the same website, the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.